coach. Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host Mitchell J. Rabin and we're very glad that you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have Dr. Joyce Kovelman on who is here from the West Coast who's going to be speaking to us about some very important work that she's been involved in called the Grandmother Circle. Joyce is a psychologist she has a background in neuroscience. She holds a PhD in both anatomy and psychology. She's been involved in the world of healing, psychology, and mysticism for many years. She's the author of a couple of books, one of which is this. And she is a renowned speaker at psychology conferences, neuroscientific conferences, and the like. And she and I are also both on the board of advisors of Radio for Peace International out of Costa Rica, which I've spoken to you about, and on which this show is aired. So it's really a pleasure to have Joyce on the air with us today and speak to us about her most important work at this point in time. And it's nice to be here. Thank Great. you. A pleasure to have you. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So Joyce, just if you would, tell our audience, what is the Grandmother Circle? The Grandmother Circle is newly forming and it's based on a Hopi prophecy of the North American Indians. And that prophecy says that when the grandmothers speak, the earth will heal. And that is, in a sense, our directive. Mm. So, and uh, you're a grandmother, of course. Yes. <laughs> but you don't have to be a biological grandmother to be part of this circle. It's sort of a rite of initiation. It's a coming of age. So we say that the grandmothers are 60 sons or more, and then there's a mother circle forming one within the other, and they are 60 sons or less. They wanted to be included. The mothers wanted to be advisory. They want to help take care of the elders, and so we've included them. Mm. And as such, we have included all the generations because one of our focus is on the children. And I envision that as we go, and we're about to explode, there's great interest from the UN and women themselves, I envision a third circle of children, because it's their world of in the future. Of girls in particular? Well, right now, it's it would be girls. Right now, it's a gender-based prophecy that the grandmothers are going to carry this energy, and they have in the past. Uh, and perhaps in the future, and there have been a lot of repression of the elder of both genders. But if we do our work well, and that's one of our goals, then I believe that the male and the female is in all of us. The grandfathers will become another circle. Right now, they're very welcome to be our advisors, our supporters, and at this point, we, they're not sitting in the circle, but they're right next to us. So um, I it's think sort of it's like everybody wants to get in on the act. <laughs> well, there, there are a couple of differences with our circle. Um, the way it's forming is it's international. And the other thing that I think is very important is that it's all skin colors. So many circles is one indigenous group or the other. There is even one of grandmothers and grandfathers, but white skins may serve them, but they may not be in the inner circle. So there's an exclusivity. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that distinguish this circle is inclusivity. Mm -hmm. It's all of us on planet Earth that have to learn to get along, to make peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world. And that is our directive. That's beautiful. And it is really a fulfillment mm -hmm. of a directive. That's prophecy right. originating and with the Hopi. The Hopi, that's right. So for now, the grandmothers will carry it as a gender issue, but it's beyond gender because the masculine and feminine belong to each of us. What we've done is we've permitted the male to carry half of it and the woman to carry the other, and people get caught, caught in the currents. Sure. What I think happens is as we mature, we begin to encompass all the flavors, 31 flavors, if you will. May 32, <laughs> maybe keep it even. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting to me that, and I think it's a bit of a phenomenon of our day, that whenever one gender seeks to separate itself out and be identified as gender, or by gender, I should say, the others are like 
looking in, peeking in and say, why can't I be part of it? It's just interesting because traditionally, in all the religious traditions of the world, Judaism, of which we're both originally mm -hmm. part, um, Hinduism, there were always separations between men and women. There was the time when the men would go to the mikvah, for instance, themselves, and the women would be off doing what they do. And there were always times of separation, and it was always respected. Today, maybe because of so much suppression and oppression of women, unfortunately, over the past you know, few centuries, that there's this rebalancing what do you think of that? I think do you know what I mean? You know that phenomenon I'm referring to? There's both a rebalancing and a quickening. And what is happening with the grandmothers is the wisdom of the elder. In most native traditions, and some of them have lost it sadly as well as us, the elder was honored. They were given a place oh, really to go true. inside where all our visions and uh, a lot of the directives come from. They were understood to have ripened. It's the maturity, the experience, because receptivity and wisdom belong to all ages and all genders. On the other hand, they un understood that when they were elders, they had a maturity to go within. And we've lost that. So some of what's coming back is the voice of women children, the elder, a lot of the disenfranchised groups, the different native populations, the first people of this planet. Mm -hmm. And what we need now is the balancing of the masculine and the feminine, the inner and the outer. Uh, my Mary hostess that I've been fortunate enough to live among for a number of trips and is helping with this circle tells me that there are two spirals. One moves clockwise, that's the masculine spiral, and it is in the northern hemisphere. And the other one, like yin and yang, mm -hmm. moves counterclockwise, and that is of the feminine. And for that reason, our first conference will be held in the South Pacific, in New Zealand, which is the hemisphere of the feminine. Makes sense. So we're getting this rebalancing of inner energies with outer and Indeed. all of that. And some gender in the beginning, but if again we do our work well, it's in every one of us. God knows. That's the truth. And it is true, it seems so, that women do, it sounds funny, embody more of the feminine than the men, in a sense, biologically by definition, although there are many, of course, uh, uh, there are many uh, counterindications to that. There are many men, actually, who embody more than more feminine, but that's a, another story. Mm -hmm. As a result, to pull that pool, that energy together for what's going on on the planet today would really be the embodiment of a healing energy, which obviously the Hopi knew. Mm -hmm. that we need desperately at this point. Well, that's really what I write about in my books because we had the good mother who became the bad mother. And this was all the early mythologies of the goddess, the great mother, mm -hmm. the earth religions. Sure. Then we had good father, which is more of the northern hemisphere and uh, the white European. Germanic, and Teutonic, Celtic. That's right. And now that's even being called into question and we have the bad father or the bad patriarch. And so I suppose that now that we're coming into something that wants to be given birth and I distinguish it from the elder, and that is the feminine. The feminine is the one who can reconcile. So these are the voices that need to be heard to balance because we've become so illogically logical and rational that we're lopsided. Oh, yes. And unless we balance this wonderful mind of ours, the knowledge with the wisdom of how to use the knowledge, what to do with it, unless we balance that, we're already in trouble. All we have to do is look at this planet and most of us we're would in acknowledge. Trouble. We're in trouble. And so on a interesting, because your background is so largely in neuroscience, I, I'll just put something out and I'd love to hear what you have to say, Joyce. And that is the ancient Chinese and the Native American have traditions that refer to this idea of thinking with the heart. In Chinese, they have a word shen, which means heart-mind. 
they don't even have a separate term for mind as we have it. Mm -hmm. It's just not in their language. And so they understand that thinking takes place in the heart. Native American peoples often know that as well and have that indigenous too, if you will, their, their philosophy. We, Western rational types, don't have that. We may come to it. But I wonder, from a neuropsychological point uh, of view, wh if there's anything that you could say about what that. happens when you take the male and the female and you wed them by taking a male activity, if you will, it is and happening. bringing it here. It is nicely happening. There's a group up in Northern California called Heart Math. Oh, yes. That I know shows it, that the way your heart functions has a lot to do with the power of mind, body, spirit integration. Uh, I believe the Chinese said that the mind is in the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? Heart now, mind is what they refer to. Now we're as. coming to alternative medicine, other levels of care which have a heart which sit down and really want to know about the patient and empower the patient and spend time. You walk into a, an alternative clinic, you've got water fountains, you've got quiet light, Sensitivity calming to music. sound and light, sure. It's a whole body system. It has heart and you contrast that to what's happening in the Western world more and more with the managed care situation, which is really managing not to care very much <laughs> or at all. <laughs> that, and true. I think that that is making people move more quickly into alternative. Now we have a big long word called psycho neuro Immunology. Immunology, P and I. <laughs> and I always say that means you have to feel, you have to deal with it, and then you will heal. But it's a process, and that brings in the feelings. And the feelings are really a cascade of biochemicals going through our body, and how we see the world depends a lot on which chemical we decide, are we frightened, are we compassionate, are we going to be giving, are we going to be taking, and they all really have a different biochemical and electronic signature. Yes. So it's happening. The scientists are finding out that stress kills. Faith heals in many ways. We used yeah. to talk about faith healers. Sure. So the so work of Larry Dossey, for that's instance, right. yeah. is very much corroborating oh, he's what we know it to be true in our hearts. The power of prayer. Where does <laughs> prayer go? Prayer is an energy, but it doesn't take space or it may take some time. But where does prayer go? How does prayer heal when the person who's being healed has no idea that someone is praying for them? Right. And what form of prayer is the best? It's usually the most open, thy will be done. Whatever is in the best interest of this individual or soul, not when we try to control it or direct it for our own purposes. Exactly. You used the phrase before, logically illogical or illogically logical and overly rational yeah. was the idea. And it just struck me um, in light of speaking about prayer and its power that we have endorsed science as the religion of the time to such an extent that we have disemboweled, if you will certainly disempowered, the power of prayer. We don't believe it's true based on generations and lineages mm -hmm. of belief of its power until a scientist can provide testing that shows on graphs that it's true. We have to prove That's it. how far away we have come from our hearts. That's right. And I'm, our intelligence, our inner intelligence, you know? When I first went into psychology, and I was told there is no mind because we can't weigh it, see it, or it. measure it. <laughs> and yet, I have not yet seen a subatomic or virtual particle. I believe they're there because they're Beautiful. traces. But there are it's also, hypothetical. That's right. But as a psychologist, I see an ego in motion all the time, whether it's mine, yours, or somebody else's. We're projecting all the time on this exactly. outer world, which then gives us very sensitive, exquisitely accurate feedback if we but listen. Mm -hmm. And so there is that interplay of heart and mind. And what I see is we have become so irrationally rational to yes. play with that expression. Right. It isn't rational to kill the planet that is feeding you or is your home. I mean, it's like a bunch of adolescents who have to go back in now and clean up our room. 
We're all I say this almost verbatim to people all the time on the show, among friends. I, exactly. It's like it's like little kids, you know. So if the playtime is over, now clean up and. Well, that's what I see. The grandmother wisdom coming back uh, forward, and it's in the elder. Um, the feminine coming in as the bridge, the herald. I see the feminine, yes. which again is in all of us. I see the feminine well, as healer, redeemer, resurrector. And I think it's time for us to heal inside, outside. Uh, that's the role of the grandmothers and the mothers. I found it very interesting yes. that the mothers wanted to be included. So I think this is the right time for a group like this. And we're not going to just do action out here. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to hold an energy, like we're talking about power of prayer. We're talking about thoughts and feelings. We're going to balance. We're going to go into those inner places of emptiness. And that's where we will receive, because I don't think we can get the solutions to all of Earth's problems out here with science. We're in the tunnel. We can only see so much. I think that the visions which have always come from the inner spaces and empowered all of the ancient people, they're waiting. But we have to learn how to, again, one, recognize those inner spaces, learn how to navigate and explore them, and to come back with that little bit, that seed. And I think that's one of the hopes of the grandmothers. Mm. That's beautiful. Let's show your book again. We are speaking with Dr. Joyce Kovelman, the author of this wonderful book, and we are also primarily speaking about her work in the formation, the new formation, of something called the Grandmother Circle, which is, according to Hopi prophecy, a gathering of grandmothers from all corners of the world, all races, all colors, all creeds, to come together to, as Joyce was just saying, hold a vision hold the ground for a healing of Mother Earth and, of course, as part of that, ourselves. And I think that some of us scientists are working within this scientific paradigm, which is a very good one in yeah. the physical world where you can weigh and measure and quantify things. It's a wonderful, wonderful art. But there is a quantum world. There is this subatomic, there is this non-local world in the terms of a lot of scientists as well. And I think we have to learn to control our emotions rather than have them control us. And that again is not just cleaning up your room physically, you've got to rearrange the furniture in your psyche. So that again you make a place and a time for quiet. We are so busy we don't have time to think. And science is now, as you said, the new religion. This is the way, the only way, and it's very controlling. But even within science, since I ride that current, there is a beginning, the science of consciousness. Is there a scientific basis? I don't think we're going to just prove it with science, but they're trying. And it's a beginning, because oh, science sure. is approaching the spiritual. I see psychology as the interface between the Definitely. two. And this is marrying or approaching the inner and the outer worlds. And there's much to learn from the wisdom traditions that have developed ways to work with consciousness, which for them is very real. Those are the traditions of the heart. And when heart and mind get together in the context of spirit, it's beautiful. And this will be a different planet. Yeah. It changes biology. I mean, I actually, from what I was saying about science as religion, uh, I, I was saying that in the, the shadow side of it, if you will. But the other side of it is that I adore the proper use of science. I don't like it or respect it as, the, uh, as a weapon, but as an exploration of, co of knowledge, of consciousness, mm -hmm. which is what it is, I consider it you know, a, a well-tuned orchestra of, of investigation. See, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and just go back to the goddess, which some women mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. I think there's, I want to bring the voice of the goddess and her wisdom in. I want to take the, what is very good and growing and healing with the, our science and technology. Indeed. And then I want to 
put them together. That's the sacred marriage. Yes. But the people in New Zealand who are also helping to form the grandmother circle have invited several of us to with them create a science, uh, an indigenous science gathering. And most Westerners conceive that as a big Western conference, and it may become that. But what I think will happen, oh. at least in the process of that, is some small dialogues where everybody sits in one circle, as equals, eye to eye. Everything is heard by everybody else, because this is also an issue of trust. What do they share from their traditions with us? What are we willing to open? Because the indigenous people of the earth are much more familiar with the rhythms and cycles of Earth. They have much to teach us about healing that part of the mm, equation. They means. have their own indigenous science, psychology, medicine. They, th there's a lot that we have just narrowly. It's an entire out. gestalt. That's right. Of being. So I'm very lucky to be one of the group that's going to be co-creating this indigenous science. And what I'm talking about, I don't know if it will play out this way, but my mystical receptivity is saying we need 20 from the West, meeting with like 20 from the South Pacific, because then we can still hear each other. Yes. And I know that the Dalai Lama had small dialogues like that. And that's how the cross-pollination took place, gently, a little at a time, time to get to know each other as people. There's the heart. That's right. That's right. Whenever people from different walks of life come together, as in Belonging to Mother Earth, the conference that Joyce and I were both present for, uh, the largest indigenous conference that this planet has seen, at least up till then, a few years ago, it took, as you know, we were all there from many different cultures. There were some people who had never left their little Amazonian villages, mm -hmm. and here they were in Virginia Beach, you know, right. in a hotel, no less. And it took time, as you remember, for people to become familiar with each other over a meal oftentimes, or sitting next to each other in the hall, and just saying hello and getting to know each other, or trying on each other's different language. Even. I think more happened over food. <laughs> than any of the plenaries. That was important to give certain dignitaries their due, their respect, mm -hmm. each nation. On the other hand, I was in, involved with protocol, and I really respect protocol. It's the structure, the glue that keeps the people together and defines them. But I also found that protocol may be the way, but it got in the way, because mm -hmm. this group wouldn't sit and eat with women. This group would eat with all genders. This one would turn to the left. This one would only turn to the right. And what began to work was a respect What do you for, do? <laughs> yeah, a respect for everybody's wisdom, but an acknowledgement that for this event, we each had to give a little and create something that worked for the moment. And it was yes. different in every hour. And it was kind of a wonder to see it. And then we had the Aborigines sitting down with the Lakota of North America. And that was great too, because some of these people have never met in the physical space and time, although I believe that they've all been to the dream time. That was the, was, uh, the vision and the fruit of belonging. Absolutely true. Absolutely. And I feel that what you are doing with the Grandmother Circle is helping to carry forward some of that energy and some of the beautiful marriage that took place among all peoples mm -hmm. at that event. And you are helping to ripen it, advance it, and also keep it coherent. Um, within it, of course, one of the main points that you've made, Joyce, is that it has indigenous to it, if you will, the idea of respect for the elders. Because as we all know, the elders of our society have been put out to pasture. Mm -hmm. They are gone. They are not part of our lives. And we have lost the wisdom lineage into ourselves from their vast experience. Women are over the hill at 40, whereas in oh, Europe, God. you just begin to ripen. Uh, so we are coming, the women's voice, needs to be heard. It is part of humanity on planet Earth. And with that, hopefully the social structure will start healing, will have meaning, will have purpose, and we will know ourselves as a sacred, noble people. That is the hope, and the grandmothers did come 
out of, I was given birth at that particular gathering, belonging to Mother Earth. I see. Now, how many grandmothers do you have gathered so far? We have about 40. It's growing by word of mouth, internet, mm -hmm. and our first gathering will be in New Zealand in March of 2001. And then in my home in the LA Basin, we are going to have our first uh, fundraiser in August of this year. And I believe Fabulous. that this is a beginning and uh, something that not only will happen, is already happening. It's a very contagious, beautiful energy of the heart. God, yes. You know that there are grandmothers groups who went down to Bosnia that mm -hmm. are, uh, I've met, I've had some on the show. We're part of a grandmothers for peace, I think it Send is. Send them to us. God, Connect yeah. me with them because sure. we need all groups of grandmothers represented. Right now there is one of each group that's in the circle, but the circle can really have many of mm -hmm. each group. Mm -hmm. We need to hear your voices. Please Absolutely. join us. Absolutely. And if people want to get in touch with you, uh, let's say grandmothers or those qualified. May I give a number? Oh, absolutely. Okay, um, I can be reached at 818-998-4228, and there's also an um, 800 number, it's actually 888, number 4, the word is soul, A-S-O-U-L, um, a soul 2 is the free number. So please call us. We are working with the UN. We'd love to have your voice in the circle and your wisdom. Beautiful. And we'll put that on as titles afterward Good. as well. But that's for the RFPI audience. That goes by, by ear. Okay, <laughs> yes. good. Good, good. Well, this is really wonderful work, and I, I truly applaud and stand behind it. I, anything that will help heal Mother Earth and bring greater recognition to and respect for the ancient indigenous traditions, uh, we and a better world for one, if you will, uh, stand squarely behind. Well, I think this is a way for peace on Earth and peace with Earth, and it is something I'm called to do. So thank God you for you. having me. It's my pleasure. Keep up the good work. Great. So you see yet another example, a fine example of someone having an idea, a vision, a calling, and stepping forth into the world to realize it, to actualize it. So it's a pleasure to have such people on the show. As you know, this is the kind of thing we at A Better World really love to share with you, our audience. Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you next week.